and I've got Stevie P with me. We are going to be covering all things Olympics, a recap, top three performers, top three failures, top three sports that should come into the Olympics, top three sports that should get kicked out mm-hmm. of the Olympics. We're going to be covering the first round of the rugby championship, the Boca taking a win versus the Aussies and New Zealand shock defeat to Argentina. Of course, the test match of South Africa versus West Indies ending in a draw. And then it is the Prem. Stevie, it is back. It starts this weekend, believe it or not. It's taken us by surprise and then covering a little bit of Community Shield. Stevie, how are you doing on this fine morning and how are you doing in the aftermath of what felt like an absolute shitstorm of an, an Olympics and an Olympic calendar? Yeah, well, it's been a bit of a it's been a bit of a weird couple of days. Yesterday, I had to like find a series to watch or something like that. <laughs> I, had, I had, you didn't I had watch sports. Yeah, I have my lunchtime break, and and usually like I, so I usually eat in my office with my with my I've got I've got an Ideas TV TV here, and I had to put on Blitz because there was just nothing on. You know, it was, <laughs> it was it was very depressing. But I'm well, as you can see, I'm a, I'm a short sleeve shirt. Summary: South Africa is starting to rise its head. It is we got up to 24 degrees yesterday. So wow. we're back. We are back. Um, we 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 we're peaking at 24 degrees midsummer. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm glad yeah, we're parking the see- button. Yeah, it's still, still, it's still getting a bit chilly in the evenings, but, you know, like a low of 13, not a low of, low of zero. So life's good down here. Um, and if you are listening, uh, make sure as a, as, a, as a male, it is time, you know, we, we've had the Olympics. And I think the nice thing about the Olympics, if, if you're in a relationship, for example, is that it's something everybody enjoys. Even if you're not a sporty person, everybody loves watching the Olympics. We're yeah. now going into the diehard section of the sporting calendar because yeah. now it is prim football. Champions League starts in, in September. We've got rugby championship. Mm. We've got curry cup. We've got t- uh, test cricket there for the Proteas. So yeah. No, it's the grind now. now is, this because... isn't like your hit of dopamine that you get from yeah. the Olympics where, you know, it's just like, it's, it's, just, it's the sugar high, right? <laughs> yeah, and you, and, and you watch like, all right, cool. Heat semis final medal. And it was within like two days. No, no, yes. now we're into the, our nine months. We've got the URC starting in a month's time. We're yeah. now into our nine month seasons here. Now we're back to the grind. We're back to the grind. Yeah, um, yeah no, it's it, it was an unbelievable Olympics. And we'll, we'll do a full uh, recap of it all. But before we do that, let's jump into our predictions game, Stevie. And mm-hmm. this is going down to the wire for those who are new around here. Stevie and I make three predictions on three sporting fixtures of the weekend. And the winner of those three gets a point. First to 15 gets to choose the um, other member's shirt of their choice to wear. So, for example, Stevie could be wearing an All black shirt or he could be mm-hmm. wearing a, a GB fencing shirt, if I, if I so choose and am able to draw <laughs> such a thing. You know, if we um, can find that, you know, I don't think I'd be mad. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I, won't be do, I won't be being that generous, but um, that, that is the forfeit. And the, the score going into this week was 13-12 Stevie after what's been an incredibly tight race. And our three predictions went like this. So the cricket, Stevie, um, there was the Proteas taking on West Indies and your prediction was an 80 to four, 80 run win or four wicket win. Mine was 150 run win or five wicket win, ending in a draw. So, unfortunately, I think we're going to have to go null and void there. No results. Um, so, neither of us, I think, have, t- have taken that one, unfortunately, due to rain. And we'll get into that whole conversation mm. in a little bit. Then the box taking on Australia, Dan Under in Brisbane and getting the monkey off the back, finally beating um, the Wallabies in Brisbane after a good couple of attempts. That was a 33.7 win. Stevie, my prediction of box by 17 was closer than yours box by 12. So that's a one point lead for me. And then we predicted on Gerda Stein's finishing position in the Women's Olympic Marathon. Your prediction, Stevie, was 14. Mine was 17. She eventually ended up in a really tough race for her and um, only came through in, what position was it? It was 45th. 48th. 
40, 40 bits, yeah, so yeah. um my 17 closer than your 14 and and as we always say in the predictions game it's not about being right it's about being less wrong so um another I'll, week I'll, where we are nowhere near <laughs> yeah <laughs> no lo- last week which to be fair i think we were quite close <laughs> last, like it was last like week, last week we nailed it because i nailed the exact hockey you nailed it predicted this exact one and yes we just, and then we were and then we were one off of a carney of a carney yeah so, so we peaked we peaked and you get them there you get them there yeah. Um, even, the, even, even even a broken clock is right twice a day. Exactly, well, once a day because it's a broken digital clock. <laughs> but we'll, we'll we'll be back this week. So if, if that this form is anything to go by, we're going to be um, on the money this, this coming yeah. week. We're going to want to stick around for our predictions at the end. But let's first of all, Stevie, just jump a little recap of the Olympics because it's just been the the flavor of the month right and first of all to just follow on from our predictions we right at the beginning of the Olympics before they started predicting on how many medals South Africa would win and I started with a prediction of four medals oh no you had a prediction of four medals I had a prediction of six Stevie do you want to tell us how many we ended up on a young six medals um I mean yeah I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, yeah, so I, I'm very, very, very stoked with that one, ending up on the exact number. I think we're both quite tentative with the, the, the predictions, but, um, you know, you, you clearly didn't predict the 4 um, by 100 or Alan Hathaway, which I saw coming from a mile away. So I, I'll what, take what, that. What, predictions don't, what those predictions don't, don't share, just very quickly, before the, the athletes that they're saying, I doubt them, is I predicted, uh, I, I basically made four goals. <laughs> um, you know, so I was really backing the the right top of the the top of the top of the top. Yeah, just in case you, they accuse me of, of not backing the buggers, I've, mm-hmm. I've always backed them. Yeah, well, let's let let's speak about our expectations versus the reality mm-hmm. and how we think Team South Africa did because I mean we've doubled our medal count since Tokyo and it's our third most successful Olympics after I believe it was. I think it's not not Beijing. It was Athens, then London, which is the same amount of um, same amount of medals, but more gold in that one. Um, so, uh, in theory, our, our third most successful, and then also the third time we've ended up on six medals. So, how do you look back? Uh, do you look back at this as a success or failure for for South African athletics and all the Olympic one. committee? Yeah, it's such a difficult one because you know, in theory, we know we've doubled our medal count, so it, it's got to be a step forward. Um, I still find it disappointing because I, I just think, you know, we are such a talented sporting nation. We know this. And it's 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 a case of so many of these athletes are getting medals despite, you know, our Olympic committee, if you can be brutally honest, in terms of the support they receive. Mm-hmm. Um, you, know, you know, it talks about, you know, the fact that, um, you know, Bayanda's um, school had to contribute towards getting his coach over there. You know, yeah. things like that. And Joanne van Dijk is talking about the fact that, you know, her parents were, were, you know, have been really, really helpful for her because, you know, she couldn't get the support she needed from, you know, from a financial point of view. You know, her parents have been supporting her career over the last few years. Now she's an silver medalist. So, and the problem is it's we, it's always retrospective help because now I'd be like, oh, cool, well, she's won a medal, so now we need to make sure she gets – no, you know, she's, yeah. she was a medal prospect before going into this. this and, and things like, like Adam Hathaway, you know, we all know that cycling is not particularly well funded. So I think it's, it's frustrating because – these people are winning medals despite the lack of support that they get. Um, and no, yeah. Not as a I, result. there's no reason why we can't be a 15, 16, you know, even up to 20 medals type or type of, of country. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a step in the right direction. Um, but unfortunately, you know, in, unless we kick on, unless this becomes, a, oh, shit, like we can actually compete, let's start looking at at, at this with a bit more seriousness, <laughs> then, then it kind of means nothing for me. You know, I think we, uh, you know, Sadcock, I've been so critical there in the past. Lots of their money going towards football and, and things like that. And you're sitting there going, why? You know, why are we not investing into our swimming program, which always produces medals? You know? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, we have we have such an abundance of natural athletes in South Africa. Yeah. Like it's we do well in all in all sports that we that we have dedicated resources to just look at you know just look at rugby as an example of how good the the schoolboy system leads into the university system leads into um you know our, our club rugby and then obviously international team and and that's finally come off the back of like a really solid base and as you said in spite 
of the lack of funding. It's always it's the flash in the pan person who come, manages um, to get through the ranks and, and then makes a name for themselves. And you know what? We actually have a lot to be grateful for, for like international, you know, the international stage that a lot of our athletes are hosted on. If you look at Sean Masangawi, he's in USA. Shame is Antoine um, Nokia, the four by 400 meter runner. So, and to be honest, I think, you know, USA came out on top in this Olympics and it just goes to show what the, that funding um, gets them. So, yeah, I think I agree with you. A step in the right direction. You, you like it didn't look like we were going to get as high as six at a point. It almost looked mm. like um, after Akani missed out on that four by uh, on the one hundred meter, it's like geez, we don't know where the next one's going to come from. But the four by one to one hundred was super special, and obviously um, the javelin throw from um, John Van Dijk. So. Yeah, I think overall happy, but it's just you wish that there was more investment. Mm. Yeah, because because there can be so many more medals, you know. There's, you know, and it's just for my, for me, I want to see a report from from Sascock, and I don't want to see a report idolizing the six medals and how phenomenal it was, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I want to see have we improved overall? Are we seeing a higher percentage of athletes getting into semis, into finals? You know, mm. because we were doing the social media and last week was a bit of a depressing time when, when Dan was doing the social media and I'm doing the updates because it was congratulations on these two did this, unfortunately they're not progressing. And that yeah. was kind of like the standard thing. And, you know, I don't think they should be looking at this and going, cool, we went from three medals to six medals, massive success. First of all, one of those medals was sevens, which is fully funded by SA Rugby, you know, so Sasko can't really claim much, yeah. um, you know, credit for that. Um, you know, we've, we're losing Tatiana uh, Smith into the next Olympics. She's retired. So mm. that's 50% of the medals, yeah. um, you know, one of them which will be fully funded by SA Rugby, the other one's Tatiana who's leaving. So we've, we've got four athletes or four potential medals in terms of, of who could be competitive next next Olympics. You know, that can't be the only focus of this report when we sent a team of 160, 170, our biggest team ever, you know. So where we progressing into better finishes across the board we'll be getting into more semis mm. more finals are we getting closer to winning medals and if not why not and, and how do we get those the performances you know we want to see you know it, it, we're never going to be a a australia you know us team gb we just don't have the resources right yeah. now down yeah. the line maybe yeah but i mean i've always said we, sh we should be dominating um, the Africa medal table. We did our best. I think we came second, third. I think it was after um, Kenya. No, we Kenya. came second. Uh, we came second, second, second after Kenya. Um, but and we know the Kenya got amazing runners. But I mean, Kenya, Kenya systematically beats us every year based purely on athletics. Mm, mm, where mm. we do, yeah, we, we do have an array of talent. Yeah, yeah. We, we we do cover the board. I mean, we had our our first ever archer this year we always mm. what's really slipped up is our rowing hasn't uh, hasn't been at its peak yeah. um that's something we used to always be contending for um you know there's even a space i believe that our hockey could get there we just need to mm. again get more funding into it um both men's and women's so the the opportunity is there for us like we have the talent pool that can rival i think a lot of the the best in the world and def certainly push into the top 20 of the medal counts we ended up on in 44th obviously largely due to just the the um only getting one gold that's going to shift you right back down but yeah i mean it's super interesting if you look at the i mean the, the top five usa china japan australia france you know the real um one that stands out for me is australia and how much they are able to punch above their weight and in mm. terms from from a population size to medal counts is is incredible what they're able to do, not just kind of per capita, but also the to be up there in terms of, you know, really high numbers in the top five in a small country just shows how much they invest in their athletes. And they're also a really strong sporting um, country and show that, you know, put their money where their mouth is. But Stevie, we've also got a, a, a medal count and it's a population per medal. And interestingly, mm -hmm. this is the top five. In one is Granada um, coming out so 56,000 people per medal. They won two bronzes. Um, Dominica was in, it was second. And that would have only, uh, that, that was one gold, one silver, which to be fair, was just um, 
one. Oh no, I was thinking of St. Lucia. I was going to say Julian Alfre, but that's not Dominica. Next one is St. Lucia in third, mm-hmm. which is one gold, one silver. That's 92,000 per person. Fourth is New Zealand. They won 10 golds, seven silvers, and uh, three bronze. That's 266,000 people per um, medal. And then Bahrain, uh, two golds, one silver, one bronze, 425,000 people. And then Jamaica in sixth, um, who had really otherwise quite a disappointing Poor, mm. Olympics because, my word, the, the, the drop-off in, in their talent, considering I mean, one, one gold. And it came, it came in, 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 in um, discus. Or yeah, discus and, discus and shot put, I believe they were – no, they, they they got a gold. They got a medal in the shop, but they didn't win gold. I was a USA gym. Yeah. but yeah, I mean that 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 running team has really, unfortunately, had a really bad Olympics. So it's a pity, pity to see. Yeah, it's 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 it was an interesting one. Really watching watch Jamaica, and uh, I was a really emotional. Um, um, interview. I think it was from from the woman shop putter, and um, it was she spoke about the fact that. Once again, a little bit like South Africans, you know, it's um, it's in spite of the 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 the, the, the lack of support. You know, they talk about the fact that um, they always sort of talk about the 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 track and how much support the track is, but the, the, the success of this games came in the field, and and they were saying that the, the, the field is just completely ignored all the time. Mm-hmm. They don't get mm-hmm. any of the support. Um, yeah, so it, was an, it was an interesting uh, interview because the track has been traditionally where uh, Jamaica have been so strong, and yet this Olympics they they, they didn't really pitch up on the track. Yeah, um, so it was it was an interesting one, but it goes to show, and I, and you look like a New Zealand, for example, it's, it's, you know, talent can only get you so far. But you know, ninety nine percent, you look at a lot of these medal stories and stuff like that. It's uh, especially in countries where there is not a lot of investment. It'll almost be like sometimes not, not a fluke, but it'll be like their athletes got an opportunity to go like study in America and suddenly when the hype film was Paul's pro, um, pro Julian, Al- Julian Alfred, for example, yeah. she's, a, you know, she's at university there. Yeah. Money breeds success. It's, yeah. it's, it's very simple. You know, you can have the best athletes in the world, which I think South Africa do without the right structures, without the right mm. coach, without the right facilities, without the right backing, they're not going to perform. I mean, fundamentally it comes down to, can I make a living out of this? Like I need to put food yeah. on the table at the end of the evening and 90% of South African athletes are, are have to ditch their career aspirations mm. as a result of that pursuing, you know, you know, a professional, professional career outside of the th- athletics or, or any other Olympic um, venture. But let's quickly touch on just some of the events from the last week. And what you mentioned that, you know, there was a lot of disappointment and not making it through. But what I was really impressed was, I think we said a lot of PBs, Stevie. And, mm. and I think... The frustration is that I think they can; those PBs can be better. But from a, I think, performance standpoint, I yeah. ha- you have to take your hat off to our South African athletes for for doing what they did because, geez, it was impressive. Um, first of all, to the four by four hundred um, meter relay, we almost got knocked out in the semi final. I was actually at the Stade de France for that. Oh, it was super emotional just like seeing there was actually a guy Antoine Nokia's um there was a guy with a poster and it says uh it said that's my grandson and a picture of Antoine Nokia and a big South African flag I could see him from far away I was like oh that's super special mm. he proceeds to get tripped over and then we lost that race whilst we were coming I think third or fourth at the time so I was just like, no, like this poor Oaks come all the way from South Africa. And then luckily we got to the final and ended up, mm. um, I think, coming fifth in that and setting a new national record of 258. As well as, well as shoving France off the track. Yeah, yeah. to be fair. <laughs> and that was him as well. That was Nokia. Yeah, Nokia was like, I've, I've been down this road before. Someone cut in front of me. I tripped. He's like, no, eat. Get out of the way. And he didn't get disqualified. So he was in. No, that was- in his right. That was proper, yeah, but it's a bit proper. Move, I was also staying away. with a with a, a Frenchman uh, in in Paris, so there was a bit. There's always just like a bit of contention, you know, between South Africa and and France, and that just added a little bit more to to that spice. Um, but yeah, a good national record from then. We had um, Brian Rotz finished twelfth in the men's high jump. Obviously, Joanne van Dijk um, getting a her silver um, with a throw of sixty three nine three. 
And then 11th for Arroy Galant. That was an unbelievable yeah. marathon race from him. I mean, uh, to get in the top 10 would have been insane. Um, the veteran and Stephen McCorker, um, not too far behind. He came 27th. Um, then two PBs in the women's 400 meter hurdles from um, Raquel Joseph, 54, um, 12, and Zeni Heldenes, 53, um, 90. Both not getting to the um, finals, but again, coming ninth and 10th, um, you know, still an inc- incredible um, achievement. And then Julia Vincent, um, the three meter springboard, making it to the three meter springboard final for the first ever South African to do that. Um, she came 11th in the end. Um, and then lastly, there was, um, you know, was it Andrew Burkett and Lovemore, the canoers who ended up um, coming first in the B final. So, all really, really solid, um, you know, showings, just not quite either just missing out on the final or once getting yeah. to the final, often not getting really too close. We weren't, like, other than Akani, we didn't really actually have too many people that, or, or and and um, our, our, our good friend, Drip King H2O, um, who, like, just were in, like, that fifth yeah. position, who just were close to the medals. We didn't really have too many of those. Yeah, I think it goes to show, you know, this is why, for example, also I always advocate for a bigger team because we're seeing personal best. We're seeing like career best performances. You know, people step up to a different level when it comes to to the Olympics. And um, you know, we would not have been sending our oh, think he's going to come back and come in at the eleventh. You know, there was never. I don't think anybody would have predicted that, for example. But people mm. bring out these once a lifetime performances, and, and this is why. You know, we need the funding so that we can even some, sometimes send those those fringe people because on the day, maybe they, they step it up. You know, maybe they can produce that once-in-a-lifetime performance. Yeah. Um, but we'll never know if we're not sending, you know, th- those sort of people and stuff like that. So I think it was a really good showing for, especially especially in that in that moment there, to, to get PBs in when it counts, mm-hmm. for example. Um, yeah. And, and just give them more opportunity to run competitively yeah. and they'll break more PBs, you know, and they'll get yeah, faster. Yeah. So. So like some, the, of the, some of these people would have been running, you know, some of these people have run, you know, a couple of like world events. But a lot of these people are, are competing on the, on the international stage for the, sometimes for the first time. Yeah. You know, because they just, they, they, they just don't get that opportunity regularly enough in, unless, unless they're good enough, really, really mm-hmm. good enough to be, to be really well funded. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's, it's, it's an interesting one. Um, so there's a lot, lot to think about. Um, for for Sascock. and especially if you know, you know somebody like a Brandon Bajar, just because I know him, you know he's a Red Bull athlete, skateboarder, so he sort of travels around the world on the circuit. I would love to know what support is he getting from Sascock? You know, is he one of those? Is it one of those things where absolutely nothing? He qualifies for the Olympics, and then Sascock sends him a DM saying, "Oh, cool, Laka, we're going to include you in the team, and we'll just you know pay for you to go to the Olympics." But is he getting support in between? Then you know, is mm-hmm. he, you know, or is and, is and 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 how does that support work? You know, is there a performance review every year? And Sascock, right, cool. How are you guys doing in the circle? Cool, 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 cool. You're on track over here. Here's a grant, for example, yeah, um, and stuff like that. You know, that's the kind of thing that uh, maybe we'll endeavor to try and find out, do a bit of a and. An, an exploration into yeah. how some of these athletes are fund, funded and what support they get. Because I remember yeah. Chad Leclerc, I remember speaking to Chad Leclerc's father, Bert Leclerc, after his gold medal. And he was saying, obviously, that they are inundated with requests for Chad to go and be a guest speaker. And be. A, and he says, at the end of the day, they don't have, they've got a limited amount of time and they've got no money. So he said, if you want to pay him 10,000 rand to come be your guest speaker, we can do that. Yeah. You know, but he, he has to try and find ways of yeah. monetizing all his time because he doesn't have you know, the financial backing to, to just support his, um, his, his, like endeavors, his, yeah. his career, you know, I yeah. mean, 400,000 Rand for, for Olympic gold, for example, that's not paying for, that's paying for not even six months of a professional athletes, you know, yeah. um, schedule in terms of traveling and yes, training yeah. and coaches. I, I mean, you saw me like Christian Bazaar, you know, I spoke to his golf, his coach, he's a golfer and, and it costs him 200,000 dollars a season to run his team. He travels with a coach, with a, a, a strength and conditioning, you know, with physio, the yeah, whole team, the, fees, the whole thing, you know, $200,000 yeah. for him to compete internationally. And he's on the PGA Tour. So it's, it's you know, it's right top of the top, but it shows you how expensive it is for these athletes to compete mm. at this sort of level. Absolutely. And yeah, I think speaking of athletes um, performing at the absolute level, we're going to go through a couple top threes, Stevie, and we're going to break them down like this. I think top three performers at the Olympics, top three um, hero moments at the Olympics, top three meme-worthy moments, and then 
top three failures. Um, and then also a, t- a couple, you know, three worst events to be kicked out and three mm-hmm. events I'd like to bring in. So I- I'm going to pitch these to you and then we, I think we t- together we can decide yeah. which, which make our top three. So our nominations for the top three performers is um, Simone Biles, first of all, the greatest becoming the greatest gymnast of all time with 11 Olympic medals. Uh, she won three golds and one bronze and or one silver. And she also became the oldest ever gymnast to win gold at 27 years old. Um, yeah. We're finished. We're, we're, we're spared, Dad. We're done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, it's ridiculous. But um, then it's Sifan Hassan from the Netherlands, originally from Ethiopia. Um, she ran and medaled in the 5K, the 10K, and then two days after the 10K, yeah, had, a, had, had a day off, <laughs> had one day off, and then ran the marathon winning gold. And I was there live for that. There, if you've seen the replay, there was almost a trip up against the barrier as Sifan was, was overtaking right on the line or with like 200 meters to go rather. And I can't tell you how quick they were running, Stevie. My word. I don't think no, my, I, my, I, saw, I saw, I saw, I saw a phone video and those videos really give you the, 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 the thing. And, and they denying. were absolutely motoring. No, it, it, it was ridiculous. So, I mean, so to win bronze in the five ten K and then marathon gold with an Olympic record, is it was her record. Of course, Leon Marchant, the French swimmer, winning four golds, two of which happened in the same evening, a couple of hours apart. And he, he also, I think, managed, I think he got a bronze on top of that. So five medals in total and just, I think, was the star boy of of the French French team. Then we had, well, the rest, the, the two others are also um, swimmers, and it's Molly um, O'Callaghan from Australia. She won five medals, three golds, one silver, one bronze. And then a special shout-out to the person who won the most medals at the Olympics was Zhang Yufei from China. I mean, I actually I feel pretty gutted for her. She won one silver and five bronzes. Surely you exchange one of those medals, one of those four yeah, goals. Four, four you know goals. what I mean? I'll, I'll take three, me. how, three how medals. Those bron- how many of those bronzes would you exchange for that gold? All of them. Know? All of them. All, all six for one goal, Dad. I think so. Honestly, yeah, I, I think, think so as well. I mean – I don't know about all six medals. I think I'd take, I'd rather take one gold, one silver than one silver and five, five bronze. bronze. Jeez, I don't know. That's tough. But I think I'd, I think I'd genuinely, I think I'd take one gold over all, over all six medals to be fair. Yeah. That gold Olympic champion, different. watching your flag being raised, national anthem. I yeah. think that that trumps any heritage. Like yeah. you must be sitting on the podium after your fifth bronze going, yeah, yeah, that's tough. Like, that's tough. Like, um, like they're gonna they're gonna rename this the this 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 step after me at this race. Yeah. Okay. So uh, from those, Stevie, who who jumps out at you as your one, two, and three? Um, I think to be fair, probably the the first three. I think I, I mean Safan Hassan has to be there. I, mean, I think is, I think for me, Safan Hassan has to take number one. I think the top four. To, yeah, I think that is to, phenomenal. To but, be that adaptable. To a five, yeah. ten, and marathon. I mean, I mean what a headache being her run. coach. I mean, it, 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 five thousand compared to forty-two k. Like, I mean, I know just. I mean, five thousand is distance. It's different body you know, time as well. It's, it's like it's, it's, exactly it's, that's what I'm saying. It's a whole different. You know, a five k. Not run like swimming, where it's so interchangeable. Runner. Like it's yeah. it's completely different. It's the, that swimming is a technique change, not a not a nutrition and training change. Yeah. Um, no, it's 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 and and to, as I said to to run the ten thousand. She was lucky in that the ten thousand. There's no heat or anything like that. So it was a one sort of race as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, to I mean, those ten thousands are are, are, are sub fifty minutes. <laughs> Imagine that right heats there. for the marathon, heat semi yeah, final. Yeah, I, you know what? I think that's what we're bringing in next. It's an eleven day. Olympics. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's like a fourteen day Olympics, yeah. fifty day Olympics. Day one, bang, marathon heats, yeah. and then a final. Exactly. Um, so I think I'm happy to give her one. I think Simone Biles, probably two, being the oldest ever gymnast to win gold, all of her teenage um, competitors. Well, I, think, I think it's an argument for Leon Marchand to, to get to grab two, to be fair. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm happy home with games, that. Home games. Um, he's oh boy. 22, 22 years old. Yeah. Okay. Says, cool. says, says thank you. Thank you very much. Let's give that to him then. Okay. That's our top three Safana Sun, Leon Marchand, and then Simone Biles. Now our top three meme-worthy moments. Um, Yusuf, mm. he 
Chech, the Turkish Turkish Assassin. shooter slash hitman. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, everyone says you don't remember whoever came second, and he proved mm. that statement completely false. So obviously, everyone emulating his celebrations. Um, of course, the are four by one hundred meter um, mm. champions, um, and then Rachel Rachel Gunn was the Australian um, breaking break dancer, breaking competitor. She, Breaker. a little bit about her and, and her background. So I've done a bit of research. So she actually is a lecturer at the University of Maraki in Sydney. Um, you know, she's actually le- lecturing in like contemporary music. She focuses on street dance, hip hop, youth culture and, and gender and politics. She actually has a PhD titled De- um, Territorializing Gender Deterritorializing, yeah, gender in yeah, Sydney's yeah. breakdancing scene, a B girl's experience of B boying, focused on the intersection of gender in Sydney's breaking culture. So she's clearly a part of it all. And she's previously um, practiced jazz, tap, ballroom dancing, and actually, apparently, despite the ridicule that she's been receiving online, one, um, I mean, she obviously competed and, and qualified for the event winning the like oceana title but also practices apparently three to four hours a day so but she we have to we have to speak about that rendition let's call it of 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 a of a dancing sequence yeah i mean you don't want to be the person to pile on the the ridicule but it was funny. I think the best the best way to describe it is people were saying it was the first time they've actually watched an Olympic event and said, I could probably do a better job. Or at least, <laughs> yeah. I, I could also do that. Which is exactly what the Olympics shouldn't be. It's like you should be in awe. Yeah. Um, there was no other events where I watched going, yeah, I could do that. Yeah, no, I could beat that person. I could be competitive in this. There was nothing. But I watched her routine going, give me a month, and I reckon I could probably do that. I reckon yeah, it, I it, it gave me big v- bully vibes at a wedding. You know, couple, yeah, you know, couple beers, it comes on, you Dutch know, courage. And, and yeah. off we go. Off to the races. You can just see the tie wrapped around someone's head whilst mm. doing that exact thing. And I think that was yeah, the funniest just, part for me is that, like, a lot of people were probably given a little bit more freedom of expression in terms of what they wore. She was, like, in, a, in like, a tracksuit, which just doesn't suit the whole vibe of, like, yeah. break dancing. You know what I mean? The whole point of street culture break is to They've got to be, like, vest. Yeah. Like some, like, some, like, like hoodie wrapped it like tied around your waist. Oh, and look you like you're not caring. She was wearing like oh, an Australian you. hat, um, you know, with Essex on the side. That's just like that's not giving me that's not that's not giving me you know hip hop energy. Um, yeah. So, I mean, she, she, she's a nomination. Then we had um, Zhao Yakin, the Chinese gymnast who learned how learned about the biting celebration whilst on the podium. It was her and the two other Italians who had won. Um, medals she saw them everyone does does that celebration where they take the medal they put it in between their teeth and they smile for the camera she didn't know what the hell was going on and she gripped it like it was i don't know a little bite out of a pie or something but <laughs> she kind of just put it's, it in her mouth like a dummy a funny moment like like watching him going oh <laughs> yeah, yeah she got it yeah literally she puts it in her mouth like it's a dummy she doesn't bite it with her teeth <laughs> yeah she, uh, she didn't know what was probably was that, that, that was that was very sweet um, and then um, Anthony Amirati, the French pole vaulter, of course, um, was that you know, was that, was, 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 that, was that the first euphemism regarding to him? Well, the, the, the articles I've read have called him the well-endowed French pole vaulter who, well, just without beating around the bush, bush excuse me, um, his, his <laughs> dick hit the, hit the pole on his way down and was the reason that he wasn't able to essentially clear one of his heights. Um, he finished 12th. Could have been much better had he, you know, been less blessed. Um, but, uh, what uh, did he, say? he said, he said it is a, um, it is a big disappointment. Because <laughs> what is, um, thing. I was like, well, if that's what you wanted to call it, then, you know, yeah. Yeah. Okay, Stevie. So out of those, I think let, let, let's give our one, two, and three. I think it's hard to look past the Turkish um, shooter in terms of the, yeah. the, the memorableness or memeworthiness uh, of what he's brought to this Olympics. 
Yeah, I think you probably have to go. Your the only thing is, I'm seeing so many, so much ray gun beams coming out of it. Yeah, like, the ray gun, ray gun's a hot contender actually, and she was a late one because she only came this last weekend, so she hasn't yeah, had time. I, I, to really... This morning, this morning I watched one which was like. They had superimposed on a cricket field and it says when you're trying to get captain's <laughs> attention to try That's to get a ball. Cool, I was just like, it's just become so, so, so good, you know. Yeah, Reagan, Reagan. Um, I the, think other one, the other one for the rugby one was like when the referee says roll away, but you've got two props underneath you, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it, it has been great. I think, we, yeah, we didn't get to see her. I think, I think he was more iconic. I think she's more meme worthy. True. Okay, we'll give the title to her. It's Raygun. Got to give it to Raygun. And then we'll go um, Turkish Sniper. And then I think followed by the well endowed Anthony Amirati. Um, Who lost, but at what cost? At what cost? Um, he's a winner at life. And then top <laughs> three hero moments, Stevie. Um, mm. Obviously, we had, I think, South Africa. We haven't actually touched into the four by 100. Unbelievable race you know the youngsters literally we're talking 18 19 yeah. 20 22 and then 30 um you know by, by, by under the, they've actually just landed by the way they've landed they're currently at the airport as we speak and by under, they, they've sent a school contingent to welcome him back but what they're not telling him is they've actually gone over there to grab him because he's actually got a prelim yeah <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah as 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 sean um masongani said you know these are this like his math next week. He's got to go to university lectures, like you know what I mean. Yeah. And you can see that that youthful joy and energy, and it seemed to have worked in our favor because they just and and they they spoke how they went on a camp beforehand and really gelled. But I think having you mentioned people not having experience, like well, Aza, you know, he definitely ha- he hasn't performed on that stage. That, he's, that he's must only have been pre- his first time ever running outside of South Africa. De- or maybe maybe in African games, but de- certainly certainly not um, internet and or abroad um, overseas in terms of in Europe. So yeah, I mean you have to um, you know, well as a Masongani who moved from usually running um, first to the second leg and having to learn um, that because yeah, because the, the, well I mean I mean you think about Bayando Olaza who probably wasn't even set to run because Benjamin Richardson was supposed to run. Yeah, you know exactly he, he was meant to just the club. He was basically going, getting getting a holiday in Paris. Yeah, you know, he was yeah. like, "I'm missing school. I'm going to get a couple of weeks in Paris. These bugs are going to run. I'm just going to support them and be like, "Woo, well done, guys. Keep it up." Next thing you know, Benjamin Richardson pulls up in the in the in the 200, and he's going, "Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh no. I'm up. He's I'm up. Going to start. I'm up. Hey, but he up he went. And uh, but it was a beautiful moment to see Akani uh, get his first medal. I mean. I was watching in a French fan park whilst the football was on in the Spanish versus France final gold match. And France have just scored to make it 3-2 on their comeback. So they're getting excited. And then it's in the, you know, when they put the uh, secondary screen in the corner. So yes, yeah. myself and um, girlfriend Chloe, we are going absolutely, we, we're watching it. We are screaming, go, go. Everyone's like looking at us like, what the fuck? We haven't scored our second, our, our equalizer goal yet. They didn't know why we're celebrating. Yeah. And then when we went up, we went absolutely nuts when we got that silver. Um, it was such a special moment. But so that, that, that that's definitely a nomination for hero moments, at least selfishly. Then we had yeah. Armand Duplantis, nine world records now he's broken, uh, breaking mm-hmm. now the 625. Just felt like the whole world was watching that and he captured, you know, everyone's, I mean, the pole vault is such a unique sport and it's just so bizarre that someone uses a pole to Mm. bring themselves up in the air. And it was so special to see a world record broken um, at the Olympics. Then obviously the men's hundred meter final, just a blockbuster. The fact that it came to five thousandths of a second between one and two and um, the fastest, you know, final from from beginning to end um out of everyone the woman's winner julian alfred from St. Lucia, and the scenes that went on back home um we had kizang um lahama sorry lamo from bhutan who was the women's marathon runner who i had the joy of running alongside as she came in she finished an hour after her the next best competitor and uh, other people did obviously <laughs> drop out of the race, but she was literally walking. She was a broken human. It was a tough course. It was incredibly hot, but 
I can firmly say it was the loudest cheer of the day. And half the crowd had left, but a hell of a lot had also stayed. So that was just for me like a spine tingling moment. I was almost like choking up whilst jogging beside her. She, when she went from her walk into her jog for her last like couple hundred meters, it was just like you wouldn't believe the noise that, that erupted. Then, of course, let's see it to the rising star. He won Botswana's first ever gold, and they have now announced the public holiday for him. And when I found this out, I was shook. I mean, we both predicted that he would do well in this Olympics, mm. but he's 21. It feels like he's been around for forever. And he like speaks with such a calm head. He even said after he won, like, do you want to be the face of the day? He's like, no, that's what Noah Lyles, the arrogant person. And loud yeah, person yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, not, I'm not arrogant and loud like Noah, so it can't be me. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Which, <laughs> which a lot of people then had to go, because if you've ever watched his, I think it was his junior title, his junior title, he smokes them like absolutely smokes them and, and he's within tw- with 20 minutes to go he starts pointing at the camera and like yeah. laughing no, he, as he goes. He's, he's, he's also been, been a bit of a showboater he's also been a bit yeah. of a showboater yeah. you know, but it's he's like it's a bit like Usain Bolt showboater on the track you know yeah. and and off the track it's just like kind of the, the mellow dude um so massive shout out to to him and then um of course um Kalia Namor the winning the first Algerian gold for gymnastics she actually left France, Stevie, for um, for Algeria, where she has um, her, her dad has has heritage from. So she changed. She got that nationality approved because what happened was the French team wanted to centralize all their gymnasts in one specific part of France to train. And she was like, "Well, no, I have my camp where I am, and this is where I I, I train, and this is where my team is. I can't like up and up and move them all." And they were like, well, then you're not going to compete and we're going to defund um, those those people. So she was like, okay, well, stuff you. I'm going to go represent Algeria. And then she went and won gold. So that's just an epic story for both her and Algeria. Then Nada Hafiz, the Egyptian fencer, um, she competed uh, whilst being seven months pregnant, which in a sport like fencing doesn't seem yeah, very terrible, safe. Yeah. No, of, no, we'll, have, all to the we'll, we'll, we'll have to wait and see if the, what, what the child comes and looks like because it could be a couple of holes in there. Like. No, no, yeah. There's earring piercings, bro. Yeah. The child's just sitting there like, imagine if the child's just there in the womb, wakes up this morning, it's like, lack and they see no, quack, quack, quack. It's like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> yeah. I'm not ready. On you? I'm not yeah. ready. Born for battle, bro. Born for battle. <laughs> He's going to come out swinging. He's going to come out like, where? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who was it? Who was it? Yeah, literally the one sport with a sword that you get poked with it's like okay yes. that's the one i'm going to compete in that's, pregnant. Yeah, I, I can do it yeah, no, um, yeah so i guess she can be a hero she'll be more of a hero when we realize her baby's safe um and then alona meyer of course she's been the star of the of women's rugby and now mm. has become the most followed person on instagram and the bronze medal that she and the women's uh, usa sevens rugby won earned them a three million dollar investment from a um prolific like vc investor in the u.s and geez i mean even when i just see that steve you've spoken a lot about investment i'm just like where's the mm-hmm. person in south africa that's just like dropping that dough essentially the person said listen um i'm giving you a million dollars a year until the next olympics i want to see you win gold and it's just like yeah. yes like standard standard 54 million rand investment yeah yeah so what could 54 million rand do to the women's game here a lot a lot <laughs> Um, so Although there is something I want to talk about when we get to with the, the rugby about the yeah. rugby because it is very exciting news. So we'll talk yeah. about that a bit there. So let's let's I want to hear your top three moments. Um, we've, got, yeah. we've got quite a few nominations there, but anything that jumps out. Uh, first one that has to be there, I think, is is Duplantis. I think in terms of like individual yeah. performance of the games, I think that for me was probably probably the one. Um, in terms of like. I mean, I know he's broken the record nine times. I mean, it's it's getting it's a bit childish. We all know he can jump six thirty, and he's and, not it's doing because it he, and everyone knows or often knows it's because he gets a kickback, he gets a, a monetary incentive for breaking yeah. the world record. So he's so just being one by one, like jumping one like six thirty five and training and like six forty and training. Yeah. He's, yeah. Like, yeah. 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 he's out there. And then he, like, it's then always a question I've had, and I'd love to ask Olympians: Is do you run and have you like let's say are there world records that have been broken? Yeah, in in the practice field, like I'd love to know, did Usain Bolt run faster than nine five eight? Yeah, the problem no. is, and this is, this is an interesting point because people are talking about the fact that if you look at like the hundred meter times over the last hundred twenty years, and they're saying that despite all the technology, the tartan, the the, mm. the sports mm. science, there's only like a point 
zero five difference or whatever. And Crazy. Saying, so do you, do you think, for example, if you were to put like a no allows into the old like tartanol type of thing all the track and with the old spikes we had to like dig holes for your starting mm-hmm. blocks you know maybe it actually wouldn't be as fast so are we actually faster but and the, the reason i make this point is the timing technology has also progressed you know back in the day you've got a stopwatch yes. and you're going yeah. and, True. and the difference between the difference between doing this versus like that yeah. is yeah. massive whereas no. these days we, we're clocking how fast they go in the exact yeah, we're time five thousand. actually yeah. to be fair for the eye test kishan thompson would have won i reckon the 100 yeah. meter sprint he would have been a world yeah. champion if it went down so, to an eye test so the, the, and the reason i make this point is i think that's probably the, so for example like you probably find we would never know if you say bolt could run that because they, they wouldn't have had the timing technology yeah, to, exactly. able to confirm exactly that but 625 or 625 for example you know when it comes to high jump when it comes to like your javelin yeah. which is far yeah. more measurable yes i'll be very interested to know i reckon he's jumped higher than 625 in training definitely it was too i mean it wasn't i mean he's in his last attempt and it was, i okay. mean and the, the reason it's so incredible is obviously the crowd stuff like that but um yeah. I, I think he's done higher in training yeah so i'm happy to um throw in Duplantis the there as a, just a moment um i think yeah, I think next one, I, I, I love to throw into Bojo. Honestly, I think he's yeah. he's been incredible. Obviously, well documented, like the passing of his mother in the last couple of months was, it's been a big thing for him ha- having her, her um, and, you know, initials etched on his, on his boots and just a, a champion to make the final of the 100. And yeah. I think came fifth. Then it was the, um, won the 200 meter. 200. And then the next almost... Day, the, the next, next day, day, he was running the, the heat yeah. of the 4 by 4 I, I, I had the pleasure of watching watching him in the semi-final. And my, oh, he was so fast. And and oh, oh, I believed he was going to beat USA in the 4 by 400 in that last lap. But yeah. I mean, he left. Every, that was the only time I've ever seen him tired, to be honest. he's never I've yeah. never seen him tired in my life. And well, boy, to be he, fair, I mean, it's the only time he had to run more than like 20 seconds. So I'm not surprised. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I, th- I think he slots into that number two spot. And then I'll let you take third, Stevie. Um, I'm probably, bet- I don't know. I mean, I thought that the Kings and Lama was such a cool moment, but again, I think, you know, you talk about the Olympics and talk about things of like, it's being about things that you couldn't do and stuff like that. I think that Julian Alfred moment for St. Lucia is so yeah. cool. Yeah. For your first ever medal to be the hundred meter woman's gold. Yeah. yeah it's, like, special. it's not, you special. didn't know first other sports, but you didn't grab a, a, a medal in, you know, well, it's, random, not, it's not niche. I always say with running, yeah. Running is the most impressive because anyone can do it. Every country well, in the world we've got the has runners. coming up, Dan. Not everybody can do it. <laughs> well, they, they are proof that everyone can do it, Steve. So I, <laughs> I, I, I counter that argument. But yeah, let, let, let's, I'm happy with that. So going one to Plantas, two to Bojo, and three, Julian Alfred. Um, both Julian Alfred and Tobojo winning their first ever goals for their country. That's just special. Mm. Um, and three... Failures, Stevie. Obviously, Kipchoge mm. pulling out of um, the marathon. He was looking to do a three-peat there on his first ever DNF in a marathon. Um, unfortunately, no allows his COVID scare and whether the, how, how factually correct the, the that COVID was. Scare, yeah. um, and why he came, got. A, I mean, he got a bronze in the 200 meters. It's not like he actually bailed out, yeah. but he was talking so much smack before that after he won the hundred and the entrance was, and the yeah. whole works. And- um, then F- Ferdinand Omanyala from Kenya, his um, he had the second fastest time in the world this year of a I think a nine seven nine, and then ran two ten eights in the first and second heat, not even qualifying for the final. It's New Zealand sevens coming third in the seven series and not managing to beat a South African team who were who were eighth. So you know, really disappointing campaign for them. The Canada drone scandal. Um, the Canada were the New Zealand like complained this. that um, after their practice they'd noticed some um, drones above head and essentially there were two coaching members of the Canadian team that were found guilty of spying on them and were sent home <laughs> early. So that's just a horrible look for 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 Canada. Um, the men's high jump jump off the one and two it was a repeat Stevie of of the last mm. Olympics where they looked to go for they were offered two golds 
And the American gent said, no, thanks. I want to go for a jump off. And he proceeded to lose that jump off. So he got silver. So th- th- that could have been um, his moment. Although I think that's how th- things should go. I think it should always be a jump off. I don't think. 11, I, it took them 11 jumps, 11 failures after that before they could actually determine the, between the two of them. It's quite wild. Wow. Incredible. Um, and then the USA 4 by 100 relay was a horror show. Um, and you could probably say the same for Jamaica, where they just stuffed up their baton changes so much. And they have a bit of a history of this. 2008, they dropped the baton in exchange. 2012, they were silver medalists before being stripped of that due to a doping scandal. 2016, disqualified for passing the baton outside of a handoff zone. 2020, failed to make a final following a bad exchange. And then another bad exchange in um, 2024. So yeah. that, Carl, Carl Lewis is absolutely fuming. Eh? He's been having a go at them all over Twitter. About I'm how, sure. You know, it's it's been a, it's been a, it's, it's as he said, it's been a thing. You know, how have we got? I mean, I said for example on yeah. Twitter that they that they were they were the ones they basically guaranteed the gold. And somebody came and said no, but like you know, look at Netherlands in the four by four hundred. I was like, yeah, but and to be fair, this is when I still thought no lies was running. They had, I think, five of the top ten fastest people in the world this year. Yeah, it's you know they had. They should have they, walked they, it. They, they should have walked they should, it. You know, no, nobody should have come close to them. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, I also so, think that Jamaican, the Jamaican four by hundred is is a is a is a shout also for the for disappointments. I mean, to not have yeah. a Jamaica four by one hundred meter yeah. relay team in the final. Shocking, shocking. You it wasn't know? like there was no disqualification. It was just bad. Yeah. They were just slow. Just bad. Um, so yeah, I think for me, uh, yeah, or you, I'll, I'll let you, you, you start us off. I think Canada has to go number one there just cause that's embarrassing. That's yeah. That's wild. For the drone scandal. Um, I think probably, probably, probably Canada for me. Um, I think the, the men's four by 100. USA. Um, yeah. 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 Absolute flop. Um, my suggestion would probably then be, so difficult to call out uh, my, my man Iliad Kipchoge. Yeah, I know. I'm the same. I'm like, I can't call him out, but you kind of have to, bro. You kind of have to. Yeah, I mean, he's he's. I feel so sorry. He, Everyone loves Iliad. Yeah, we, we love yeah. him. We love him, but unfortunately, it just wasn't his day. And and yeah. he had to pull out. I mean, I'm I i did not get to see him in person, so I'm just personally sad. Um, because he well, didn't. Were you there waiting for him? Yeah, I was there. I was there waiting. <laughs> you didn't see him. You saw. You saw the car drive by. Oh, he's in the car. He's in the car. Yeah, yeah. yeah unfortunately, but yeah. Okay, there, there's our top three, and then quickly, Stevie, because we still got other sports to get onto, but um, we'll, we'll fly through those. The the top three worst events our nominations are football, breaking, fencing, three on three basketball, tennis, and golf. Uh, which three are you eliminating from the Olympics if you had the choice? Right. So my general thing is, if this is not the pinnacle of your sport, get out. So football out. Got to go. Yeah. But yeah we, we, also, we've been in agreement with this for a long yeah, time. No. Got to go. Got to go. We don't need it. Don't sit there. And we said, if you want to have football, do beach football or do five yeah. side. Do yeah. a different type of thing, which is unique to the Olympics. I don't need this whole 11 side. Let's pick it on 23. Try it. No. Get out. Give um, us TP ups rather, you know? Yeah. yeah freestyle. Yeah, exactly. You know, right. Like uh, so, football out you no, go. Under me, bre- breaking no. out, yeah, but breaking out you go as well. Um, breaking, yeah, shame. And and they've already been announced that LA aren't going to keep them on. So yeah, no, <laughs> they, no, had, no, they had their time out, in the sun. But out they are, I, I um, also don't think that was always it was funny, but it wasn't like respected, which is actually no. what you kind of more want. No. Um, and it's physically, and when you're done properly, it is impressive. But no, not for Olympic sport for me. Get out. Um, I, I mean, the fencing. I mean, I don't think I think fencing is a very strange sport. Um, but it's not, I, I found it a bit boring this time because maybe it was just the technology. I think used, they used to like light up um, more, like their whole yeah. body suit just light up. So you could I tell. Think just make the sword sharp. And then it was much more understanding. <laughs> yeah. Where is the jeopardy in fencing? Yeah. You know, <laughs> what is it? Um, yeah, but I think, no, I think fencing, fencing, fencing's tough. Fencing's there. Fencing, I like fencing. It's also such a, it's also, it is a pretty iconic. Yeah, it is iconic. Olympic sport. You know, we always talk about, oh yeah, I'm going to watch the fencing. It's like curling when it comes yes. to. No, it is, a, it is fencing, iconic. Yeah. It, it's more, it's more of a personal vendetta for me, but I think yeah. it's more than, I think for top three, three on three basketball versus tennis versus golf. Like when going back, to I that think I think cup take off tennis for me because we've got the Davis Cup and we've got yeah. majors. Um, so tennis and golf as well, I think should be gone. I, I think I think golf can stay, but change the format, make it yeah. a two-person better ball team game type of vibe. Yeah. 
Um, and, and the same goes for, um, yeah, but basketball, you shouldn't have two variations of the same sport there. Yeah. Like, I think 3v3 has got to go. So we've actually, we just kind of... I mean, they, they, they could, they could be fair. I think there could be an argument to get rid of basketball itself. I think we need to stop getting, stop having um, sports where, as it's not the, the peak thing, uh, you know. But I think it's the, it's the peak national competition. It's the biggest, they have a World Cup, but not everyone... There is a World, there is a no, world but Cup. They don't basketball. go, though. They don't go because it's not worth their time. But the Olympics, there's that esteem <laughs> to it. So then I think that's fine. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're going to get rid of football breaking um, and tennis, and then I think that makes the most sense. And then on the, and change golf and change basketball. Um, yeah. So three sports we bring in, Stevie. Our nominations are paddle, spike ball, darts, ultimate frisbee, trail <laughs> running, kills me. Um, touch, and that's um, you know like the. Uh, they're like obstacle courses and they have to, you have like to go tag, like tag someone play. Yeah, I like wild. touch tag rugby um, but that, or, you know even bring in stingers or total wipeout um, <laughs> no, let's, let's bring up let's bring up like the, the school you get like open the gate dude open like, the gate, open the gate. Let's, let's, let's bring up that dude let's bring up open gate let's bring up let's it, just bring up be head, it would just be HIA head assessment injuries non-stop yeah, you, but. dude we were dominant open gate sorry sorry you putting in you know, Kirkley Orenser, people from the Merva, Cheslin Colby into open gate. To the, dude, they're obviously going to touch them, dude. Yeah, yeah. Peter, okay, there must no. be a step the toy. Just wiping yeah. people. Yeah, I'm in, oh. I'm in. Okay, oh. cool. I'm adding that, dude. <laughs> okay. No, but, but okay, we, we're not going to actually throw in um, touch wipeout or open gates, but it would be fun seeing that on an international stage. But from um, paddle, spike ball, darts, ultimate frisbee, and trail running, which one would you chuck in there? I think paddle has to go. I think the, the way it's growing um, mm-hmm. and it is, Unreal to watch live. Um, oh, these cool. guys are stupidly good. Um, you know, everybody goes and plays paddle. They have good shots. They think, oh, maybe I can be good at this. And you watch a video and you're like, yeah, no, never mind. Yeah. I, I mean, I look at tennis and I think I could make it as a tennis player before I make it as a paddle player. And there are a lot more tennis players out there and far yeah. more, I think. But there's, that paddle is unreal. So I think that for me would be such a cool um, addition. Um I mean, Dars so non-athletic, so I think that's probably the, my problem with Dars. But it's also so much like it's become so much fun. Yeah, it's um, it's, it's, it's big spectator, right? Yeah. It's, but they've also kind of got their own world championship, so it kind of goes against yeah. our argument there. I love to see spike ball. They do unbelievable, <laughs> like also unbelievable athletes. And it's like when you watch the like best of the best do it, it will be insane. And I think it's that'll be box office. Imagine that in the in like a stadium, people watching, epic. Um, and then I guess the next one is between ultimate frisbee and trail running. Um, I don't know which one you, you, you lean towards there. So, uh, my biggest problem with ultimate frisbee is, is, is when it, I've watched it and I've watched the South African, like champs and vertical commas. Um, and I just sat there going, guys, this, this is not, this is not doing it for me. I no, think but I, I, have I, you I, seen I, the USA people, bro? They no, are. But I have, but it's just, it's no, look, I mean, again, any, any sport down at the absolute highest level is, is very impressive. Um, I think trail riding, I suppose, makes more sense from an Olympic athletic kind of point of view. Um, yeah, I mean, I just think chuck in a 300k race there over a couple of days, <laughs> see, who, see who comes out on top. Like, I think that's peak bloody athletic performance. But if you're worried about darts being not athletic enough, throw in a throw in a trail event. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay, well, let's give it to trail then. So we got uh, paddle, spike ball, and trail running at the next Olympics. If we were the um, people running the competition, mm. Stevie, we finally that's our Olympics preview done, and we're going to get into the the Paralympics. Thank you, everyone, for following um that but it's been great covering it and we excited for the paralympics in two weeks and next week we'll give you a big um mm. introduction to that but let's jump into the rugby stevie as we um you know approach the hallmark almost on, on the podcast so we're gonna have to fly through this and the the cricket um but yeah let's jump into how you found the first week of the rugby championship well we're winning it for a start so that's quite easy <laughs> Um, the championship, yeah, look, or? <laughs> the, the champ, everything, everything, whatever everything. it is, we're winning it. Um, two very interesting games. Uh, first of all, the box completely dominating Australia should have been more, could have been more. Um, but this game for me showed why people are talking about us as being a different level at the moment. We are so yeah. much more than just the big bulky box are going to run over you. They're so we've so become so multifaceted. I think the box, this box progression 
mm. is so exciting because we're seeing everything. We know we're seeing a dominant scrum. So we're seeing the physicality part. Mm. We're seeing dominant collisions. You know, we're seeing the line out percentage wasn't great, but we're seeing innovation to line out and rolling more tries, for example. Yeah. We're now and our, and our rolling ball hasn't been what it used to be. No, it's actually. not. No, it's not. So that was, it was like, I think it was one of our first more tries in a while against a proper nation. You know, we, we then look at, at the way we're attacking, for example, counterattacking. You know, the, the set moves off scrums. You've got, you know, Kubis Reinach joining the back line. As a coach, I think you look at the spring box right now and you go, I don't know how we beat these guys. There's, you know, there's so many different things to try and shut down, mm. whereas previously mm. it was kind of like, well, if, you know, if you can meet them up physically and, and yeah. put them on the back foot and contest really well in the air, you know, you can probably, now I think we've become such a difficult side to beat. Um, I think that's probably the best. That's probably why I'm the most happy with what we're seeing is that we're such a difficult yeah. side to try and beat because there's so many different elements you have to try and individually take on. Exactly. I, I think the funniest and, and the evidence to show that is in everyone else's response outside of South Africa. And people are looking at us not just as the model for success, but, you know, obviously there's, you know, claims that rules are being changed to, to not suit us. Mm. But it's just, it feels like, I mean, it, I think it's been exacerbated with New Zealand's lost to Argentina that everyone, and it's the conversation about super rugby and South Africa not, mm. you know, that that detracting and, and, and really having a knock-on effect to the quality in New Zealand and Australia is, is now paying dividends. And everyone just seems to be shaking in their boots a little bit about what yeah. everyone can't help but speak about nobody, the spring box, nobody gave us which is the biggest compliment you can take. Yeah. yeah, no, exactly. You know, nobody rated us on 2019. Everybody said that we flipped the World Cup and that, you know, England had played their final in the semi-final and, you know, we had lost to New Zealand, you know, yeah. and then we that had was, a World that Cup. That was step of, one. That was step yeah. one of a much... And then we had a World Cup of, 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 of three one-point wins and everyone's going, oh, but yeah. And now, I think, to be fair, I think I, I felt in the last couple of weeks people are starting to go yeah listen this is this is a proper proper best mm-hmm. in the world side mm-hmm. you know uh, and, and it's very it's very um new and creative under this new system very different mm-hmm. to how we won the world cup new coaching staff and tony brown obviously having a massive effect and you know we saw great performance from sasha gomezulu at 10 again he looks so calm and looks like he's been there for you know 20 plus tests um, rather than yeah. this being his first international season. So you have to give credit to to him just for going in with such confidence. Yeah, well, I got actually taken apart by somebody online because I gave him a 7 out of 10 for his performance. Um, and, and I was told that I know, I know nothing. Um, okay. it's, quite, it's quite an interesting one. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, I think we need to talk about Sashwani Gomez, I think, actually, and which is the reason I mentioned that. Because I think what we're seeing is a generational talent that is all 22 years old. Um, it was such an interesting performance because he would, first of all, he shanked his first penalty. Yeah, you know, the duck hook. <laughs> to, to, ruin his, to ruin his eight from eight to record. His, At least yeah. he didn't, like, I mean, you know, everything he, about it, he just, like. It was oh. awful. Like, yeah. that could go down as one of the worst kicks. From, yeah. But then two <laughs> minutes later, he also bangs a, a penalty kick right into the corner. Yeah, yeah no. So, so and, that, and that's, that's like your sign of, of like a mature yeah. rugby player. It's like, okay, mistake, put it behind you onto the next well, I think, I think I think when he laughed off, I think he was just like, you know, I was cracked. Sorry, I was like, oh, And I think he just knew that's, that's, that's not a kick I usually kick, so it's fine. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, he had some moments of absolute brilliance, you know, a couple of good moments under the air, that that break he made, you know, that, that one mm-hmm. at offload. Um, mm-hmm. But there are still mistakes in this game, you know. There are, he did miss touch twice, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's becoming a bit of a trend because he missed it as well against against Portugal. Um, you know, he slipped a couple of tackles, but I think he made eight. I think he was one of the, or, or, you know, so he's, it's such a, he's such an exciting player to watch because there are those mistakes of a young player coming through. Um, and experience, and, and, and but there are so many good moments, and what excites me the most about them is you look at the mistakes. They're such fixable mistakes. They yeah. are mistakes that once he's got ten, ten he's not going to miss touch this weekend. I don't think he will. I think he'll realize, okay, cool. I don't actually have to go forty meters every single time. Just get it back. Make sure you know, especially yeah. in the moment. You know, if it's on the twenty-two, if it's on the five meter, we can deal with it. So it's yeah. those kind of things. You know, his goal kicking, we all know, is world class. Um, so I think the mistakes, the couple of mistakes he makes are such minor, easy ones to to fix. That, that that's what excites me. You know, you just, you, I just don't He's see just putting everyone any in shortcomings space. in this yeah. game. I just, I, his vision is unbelievable, and his ability to trust his creativity 
because that's something that's really difficult to do on the international stage, stage is bring that flair that you had at a domestic level when your opposition isn't as good turn into to the international stage. Listen, we're not here saying that Australia are, you know, one of the top three teams in the world. They're not. They yeah. are not at their best. But it was by far his biggest game and his biggest test mm-hmm. and the first time he's been given the starting jersey. So it was a massive moment for him. And he I think he did pass with flying colours. As you said, the mistakes he made are, yeah. are, are fixable. But moving on to the test this weekend, we're taking them on in Perth. Um, just before Drikas takes on mm. Izzy Adesanya um, in the hope of that he gets a UFC bout in Africa. And that would be pretty iconic in of itself. But yeah. before we go into the UFC, um, we've drawn and lost our last two games in Perth. But, I mean, judging by the I really felt like a 50-50 crowd of Australians and South Africans in Brisbane, mm. you feel like it's going to be about an 80-20 crowd for South Africa in Perth. Yeah, I know. I'd be very impressed to see what the the the, the, the traveling support is like for Australia, um, <laughs> because we're basically we're basically going over from Colonies in Perth this weekend. Um, yeah. Perth Fontaine. Was, yeah, there we go. Perth Fontaine. Yeah, I think we should just um, trademark that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Look, I think I think as I said uh, previously, we've lost by one point in the mid June 2017, so it's not like we've got a record to worry about. I think we will rotate. Team comes out well, as we recall this in a couple of hours' time. I think there will be a couple of changes, but I think generally we'll keep a lot of the spine the same. Mm. Um, yeah, so obviously, like, Vessels and Makazole were uh, at the press conference and all deluded that they were, you know, it's likely that if you had a press yeah. conference that you're going to be playing that weekend. So, both of which I think will be really exciting to watch. I mean, Makazole yeah, so is I think always you might top, see like a, Yeah, I think you might see an Oxen chair rested, for example, and, and uh, probably come totally. getting a start. And yeah. I think, yeah, currently all Cheslin and Pippi probably starts. I mean, yeah. I mean Pippi has to start because there's rumors that Corbetti's playing. So it's not really up to, <laughs> yeah. it's not really up to about the bar coach stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, exactly. Uh, Mike has always said pretty, he was starting, so no. Yeah, yeah. He basically like delayed his retirement to come back and play this game. Um, yeah. You know, after this, he might just be like, well, you know, I want everything. I'm going to go and, and well, chill. What's, um, in, in a way, that's what's funny about that rivalry is they're actually two of the nicest guys in rugby. And yeah. and they actually don't hate each other. They just there was just that big row just, and yeah. in, in the back to back games last year. So the the rivalry's there, but it's they, I think both people know it's based off of respect, but they both want to bloody smash <laughs> smash each other. Correct. Um, but both the actually yeah. like just underspoken and clinical finishes and insanely physical beasts. Um, but really excited for for the second test. And yeah, I mean let's quickly touch on the New Zealand massive yeah. loss to Argentina and down in Wellington, a place that not many, many people go and win, Stevie. No, it, it was, I, I said on Twitter, I love watching New Zealand versus Argentina. If there's, if there's a non mark game that you want to circle in your calendar, this is the one because it's just bonkers. It's always bonkers. You know, you've got two teams who are attacking wise, some of the best in the world, um, mm. prone to some wild moments. And, and some mm. of those Argentina tries were, were so cool. Um, the Contaponi era after such a shaky start against France to go to New Zealand in Wellington and beat them. The way that the okay. veterans, Augustin Crevy coming off the bench and that, that scrummage performance towards the last stages of the game. A couple of steals uh, and a try from him to, yeah. to win his first. He wasn't there when they won a couple of years ago. Yeah. As well. So his, his first words, win. It was fucking amazing. Yeah, fucking amazing. <laughs> fucking amazing. <laughs> he was like, lost for words. Uh, what is it? It's, Fucking amazing. <laughs> um, uh, no, so, yeah, that's massive. And you ha- the rugby championship is ours to lose. There's no doubt about it. it is. You absolutely have to win it now. We have the best fixtures away and the best fixtures at home. Yeah. So, it, it, it would be an unbelievable I mean, failure. New Zealand, New Zealand were kept – they, they don't have a point in the rugby championship right now. They're tied no, with – They missed out on the losing with, bonus point. Yeah, they didn't even lose the bonus point. So, 30. you know, we've got, five, we've got a five-point head start on them. Cannot lose to Australia this weekend. You've got to be going for a bonus point victory, which means that we'll go into that New Zealand clash in theory with a minimum. What we should do is a minimum of five point lead. Yeah, you know, you then beat them, and, and you go into a second clash with yeah. potentially like a nine or eight nine point yeah. lead, which for them a victory but, against us in the but, second test wouldn't be enough to to to, to overtake us as long as you beat be twice. Yeah, I wouldn't be that surprised if like it's a one win one loss uh, to the yeah, All Blacks at home. I, I, I think we, even, I think we beat them in in at this park, and I wouldn't be surprised if we lost them. We never fucking keep the Freedom Cup. It's just like rugby heritage. Um, but also, I think that Argentina away is going to be a proper banana peel. 
that's going to be that's going to be a big one where people might just have their heads switched off a little bit. We've seen what happened, how dominant we were versus Ireland, and then not managing to back that up with another solid performance. So now we're looking for consistency from the Springbok team. So mm. be exciting to see. And, and our, as we said, our expectation is that we come out on top. Let's quickly touch on the Curry Cup, Stevie. And round six is now done. A 40 points to 21 win for the Sharks. A 26 point to 19 win for the Cheetahs over the uh, over Western Province away. Um, and then the Bulls with the blowout win, 55 points to 21 versus the Griffins. And of course, your Lions, a massive mm. 55 to 12 point win against the Pumas at home, which puts you yeah. guys up into second. Yeah, we want Fenter hat trick. You know the 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 next you know enforcer, the next big Springbok legend. Um, mm-hmm. You know, going back to Carry Cup and doing the doing the business. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's a very interesting table. You know, Sharks steadily trying to climb up. Um, Province is continuing to having a bit of a, a bit of nightmare Carry Cup at the moment. Always. Um, so not looking good to finish in the top four. No. Uh, Cheetahs importantly for them. Um, yeah, bouncing back and getting and getting a victory. I, it's, it's it's quite cool actually. I'm going to watch Lions versus Bulls in two weeks' time, but Loftus is being used for a concert, so it's actually happening at a school, it's happening at Midland oh. College. Oh. Yeah, which is going to be quite which is going to no. be quite interesting. Um, um, yeah, and 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 I, and I did a I did a I did a I did a survey about I mean, uh, calling back label now sponsoring it at the moment. Um, so I did a survey about the Curry Cup, and they said, "What would you like to see more?" And I said, "More games at community stadiums." You know, mm-hmm. like I'm really looking forward to that. I'm really interested to see what it's going to be like because yeah. I don't want to water down the Curry Cup. But I mean, I went to to to, to Ellis Park. It was a decent atmosphere. It was a decent vibe um, for the for the Sharks it's game. Good but, a stadium for a Curry Cup game. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 ginormous. You know, yeah. um, I'd love to see more school stadiums, more university stadiums being used for the Curry Cup. Yeah, uh, I agree. Um, Stevie, the football season is starting. And to be honest, we barely, you know, it started. Yeah. Um, yeah. Man United Short taking L's. Love to see it. Man City Ford love. Evans at 36 years old, you know, taking a penalty at uh, Wembley going, yeah. how has it come to this? Yeah. I mean, it looked like it was a pretty horrible penalty as well. Um, but yeah, that was a 1 1 draw with City going to extra time and City winning 7 6 on penalties. <clears throat> I mean, you had, I feel like, all the clear cut chances and should have put it to bed a lot earlier. Yeah, we should have um, Rashford with those two chances. Yeah, Rashford's two chances. Bruno having that goal ruled out for offside. That was an unbelievable finish had it been onside. Um, but it just feels like we've been out of touch with the football space and any preseason, at least me, because of the Olympics going on. But yeah, first first round of um, Premier League this weekend, and we thought we'd give our top four predictions, Stevie, um, with with a lot of um, a bit of action in the transfer window, but nothing huge, no real marquee hundred million um, signings mm-hmm. that have happened really as of yet. Probably the biggest one is um, Pedro Neto to Chelsea. Um, yeah, and and Solanke and, to, and, to, to Spurs. <laughs> yeah, and if and if we get if we get a lift over the line, yes, then that's probably, that'll be that'll be a marquee, probably, probably a big one for us. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Um, so, do you have a one, two, three, four in mind there? Well, interesting news: Manchester City's uh, hearing for those 115 charges yeah. um, begin in September, and a verdict expected early January, early 2025, so which makes that will be point, coming. Actually. Well, that's that's what that's that's why I'm throwing it in there. Oh. I'm saying, will we see a sanction? You know, okay. I'm um, not putting City in my top three because I'm going to put it in the universe that they get bloody um, demoted yeah. down to League Five. Yeah. So uh, you're nice to win it. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I can't. I can't. For me, it was easy to say, okay, well, City going to win because they've just got everything, etc., yeah. etc., etc. Et et no, let's, they, let's assume they get, get penalised. Let's actually take yeah, them out. That's what I'm saying. So we assume they're going to get penalised. Liverpool new manager, no idea what to expect from them. Yeah. Um. You okay. know, yeah. Chelsea, who bloody knows? Spurs, <laughs> let's be real. Um. And Arsenal. I mean, that whole story about uh, Mikel Arteta. I want to read that story <laughs> that, that you put over here. I mean. It's, <laughs> So, Mikel Arteta hired a team of professional pickpockets whilst he was at dinner with his Arsenal players. Apparently, this was part of his a strategy. The pickpockets went around tables, pinching phones, while it was important things. At the end of the meal, Arteta asked players to empty their pockets with several missing key items. This was to teach the squad the importance of being alert and prepared at all times, always ready to react. <laughs> or just give them what anxiety. The and the dumbest, yeah, he's always got these duck the dumb. I mean, you watch him uh, changing things. And yeah. you're like, Who is this guy? Like... like- I still, I somehow still don't have faith in Arteta. 
No, which I have no reason to because he's actually done really well. Like he's done incredibly well on the field. Yeah. But I look at him, I'm just like, guy, you're not him. Like just yeah. Chill, and, like, and you, you know? did you see that video of, 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 of there's a Bernie documentary? I mean, they're now making Bernie documentary. This is where we are in the world. But of of Vincent Company like, yeah. losing his shit, like, shouting at I think it was at at, uh, at Goodmanson, and like he got relegated. Yeah. I mean, how that guy's flipped the buy-in job. But I mean, I look at him and I'm thinking, dude, you fuck one nothing as a manager. You came third, I think it was, yeah. in 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 the Belgian league, and now you're like berating like these Bernie players who, you know, yeah, they won the championship, but yeah, this is like this is Bernie, dude. Like, yeah. So no, I kind of get the with with, with uh, going back to top four. I'm going to go. City get sanctioned. United finish first. Okay. Um, Arsenal perennial second places. Okay. Yeah. Um. I think Liverpool still have a good enough squad to to finish top four, so I'll, mm. I'll put them three. As long as you guys click relatively early with with um, with the new with, with how yeah with how you guys are gonna play mm. underneath them, um, and then Chelsea's such a lottery, isn't it? Um, yeah, a bit like Newcastle. I think Spurs actually um, are gonna have yeah, a good I season. Spurs. I, I think, think Tulanki is a quality signing. Yeah, I yeah, think, and I think they're settled now under under Big Ange. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm the same. I'm going to flop. I'm flop. I'm going to switch. I'm going to just put Liverpool at top because I have to. And <laughs> I'm going to put Arsenal two. I think it's actually going to be um, three Spurs, four United, Chelsea just missing out. But Chelsea, I wouldn't be surprised if they also go on a run. They just, mm. as you are, need to get that centre forward sorted. Um, and I believe Victor Ossiman is looking for a club. So, I mean, you've got to go break yeah. the bank for him, but that could be a pretty insane signing. Um, you just looked at the balls that Bruno Fernandes putting in in the Carabao Cup and just no one. No, nah, we've got, we've got jerk sheep. Don't, don't just chase. Okay. Um, but, yeah. I mean, the, maybe, the, the dark horse we haven't mentioned, obviously, Newcastle and Aston Villa. I mean, Aston Villa... Quality. You know, how my biggest problem is we often see a second season syndrome, you know, after that kind no, of that's like, why it's just league. the schedules you saw with Newcastle with having yeah, Champions exactly. League. The squad gets doing quite there. But I mean yeah, I'm very good. excited to see Villa in, in the Champions League. That's gonna be special. Um yeah. Villa Park is gonna be absolutely bouncing. I and mean, we all know that Europa is really the league you want to be in. Um <laughs> but yeah. Exactly. No, no, we, we do know Thursday nights are, are, are the best. We, um, yeah, it's got it's, it's got a cool anthem, dude. It's, exactly. It's, it's like nice and vibrant, modern, modern. Yeah. And then finally, test cricket, Stevie. Um, the Proteus drawing. Um, well, it did test me. It tested my patience <laughs> watching covers being put on, and every single yeah. time we're looking like a result, more covers being put on. Uh, yeah. Ian Mulder being denied his double century. Uh, <laughs> I told you he wouldn't make his 50. I told you he wouldn't make his 50, and he didn't. Obviously, it's because he, was, he was not out. Um, so it's probably boosted his average by at least 20 runs there. But yeah, yeah I mean, notable performances, Timber. In with the runs in 86, Tony DeZorzi, 78, yeah. and backing that up with another 45 in the second innings. Tristan Stubbs with his first half century of 68. Um, but decent and off the bat. That, that, that Stubbs in, in, in is an interesting one because people have been talking about the fact that they don't really rate him as a three. Now, I, I don't think that that... I mean, you as well. Really, you as well, not yeah, just people. But, but, but I don't think that innings, in many ways, 68 or 50 balls. <laughs> it wasn't a three. It's because we were chasing time. We were chasing yeah, time. Yeah, it's I'll say. That kind of almost proved my point that... I think you know the counter attacking number six, number seven, for example, is is where I think he he he. he Rich punt type, Rich punt type of um, player. You, we were, I mean, a lot of people accusing us of playing boring Test cricket. I mean, weird chat. Um, but I wonder if that might be why old Chucky's backing a three. Maybe he's sitting there thinking, well, actually, I'm going to put somebody out there who's positive that looks to score. And he's going mm-hmm. to be the guy that tries and ups the run rate a bit. Yeah, that um, yeah, yeah. you know, you've, the, you've got Timber Boom over there who's going to. Listen, I mean, he also scored I mean, a triple century, so he knows how to bowl in innings. Uh, he yes. bowl, scored a triple century this year, so he he does have some accolades at domestic level of playing, you know, proper Test match or you know, long format cricket. Um, yeah. But I was just happy to see him. I, I genuinely think he is our most talented cricketer in South Africa, and I think yeah. for the next ten years, a lot of our success is going to be um, depending on on how his career and his performances go in the, in big moments. So. Hopefully he, you know, settles himself on the test stage, 
gets that first 100 under the belt. It's obviously the big monkey off the bat that we saw the likes of Rusty van der Dussen not able to do, Keegan Pearson not able yeah. to do, and it kind of plagues people. You know, even Temba, to an extent, he's got very few hundreds, and it's always been the case of so many starts, not enough converting, and that was actually read well, a similar that's scorecard. that's the case, by the way. That's what I was going to look at our batting lineup over here. You know, Markham, nine, but then Dorsey, 78, Subs, 20. Boomer 86, oh, Benningham 29, Ryan Rickleton 19, Varane 39, Mulder 41. So many starts there. Tazorzi yeah. and Bavuma are the only ones getting past at 50. Nobody going to that big three figure game. And yeah. the general rule is if you score hundreds, you, you win test matches. Yeah. Um, I think Vian Mulder, and this is not just me because I, I enjoy him, I think he, I think that's the best I've seen him look at test cricket. He looked really, it didn't look yeah. like he was going to go out. You know, he ran yeah. out of partners. His fault, he took a single or two early in the, in the over, he gave far too much backing to the long sleeve, yeah. Lungasani and Gidi. Yeah, very um, um, but um, he looked he looked really good. And interesting to see what we go with balance wise. I don't think we necessarily need that extra batsman. Yeah, uh, I'd love to see as you said last week, Rickleton keeping and um, drop then Verena bring in Dan Pete because I think the decision to not have that extra spinner really worked against us. Yeah, and I also think that Lungi probably needs to drop out, and you got to get an Andre in. We need express pace. Yeah, I agree. I agree. We haven't got anyone and really pushing. Pushing um, that that high 140s mark, KG is always like the low 140s, um, 130s. But he, he, he's just hitting the deck and getting the ball to move more than he's beating yeah. people for for express pace. Um, especially and if, when, and, like, and if, when you have you, Ian Mulder got... as your other seamer, like yeah. he's not he's bowling the same pace as Lungi. So you kind of you're fitting that box, and obviously Vian's an all rounder. Yeah. Um, so I think if you had Nandre left arm, um, different type of the character, stupidly fast on one end, you've got Cagey coming the other end. And, you know, mm-hmm. that is a proper, you know, test for, for, for the openers. And then you've got, you know, you can add in the extra spinner. Um, yeah. And, uh, although, and Stevie, I, I just want to bring it raise a point that I think every single test match needs to have a sixth day. Surely, at this I mean, point. I like we play so few, to- we play so few tests and then to see it lost because of rain, it's just like, such a ball like I can understand if it's like a, a Ashes series, you can't do that because that's an extra five days on a schedule, so that's long. We're talking about an extra two days here of a tour. That's not that much. You can you can do with that. You know, give them one less day to recover. Even honestly, I mean, it's, ICC is busy trying to like investigate four day test matches, but um, you're not down the back. You a reserve I, I, day. Yeah, please, please, please. please. I think what, what annoys me, I think the most is the fact that they don't actively try and make up the time. Like, you know, you lose like three hours in the day. And then, and then like, you see oh, the cool. sun up early and then no one's going to get be like, yeah. And they'll be like, cool. We'll start half an hour early. No, don't start at 10. Don't start at half an hour. Start at nine. Yeah. You know? Start at eight if you need to, Just right? Get out. get out there, man. <laughs> Bit of dew. Up early. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, Okay, let's get into the predictions as we wrap up this long episode, Stevie. Um, first of all, we're going to start with the Boca versus Aussies. Uh, what, what do you have? You got a number in mind there? Yeah, I mean it's an interesting one. I mean, you expect to see a response from Australia. Um, you know, I think generally teams usually do respond to that, but at the same time, I thought the box looked really, really good. Mm. Um, so I do have a number. Um, okay. Do you? I'm ready. I'll count us in. Right. Three, two, one. Box, Box by 17. I've gone with the exact same number as last yeah, and time. I'm not going to fall into the mistake of, uh, of going under you. So. Okay. okay. Um, cool. Next, we're moving on to South Africa versus West Indies. Second test starting this Thursday. Um, Weather is looking a bit better. First day. It's right. raining on day one. So we'll have four days, hopefully. Um, but yeah, have you got... Let's start with runs and then we'll go wickets. So let's, are yeah. you ready with the runs prediction? Yep. Okay. Three... Two one 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 yeah. five. Yeah. Okay. And then for wickets, three, two, one, six. Five. Okay. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Um, last one. Premier League, City versus Chelsea opening game week. Who have you oh have you got a prediction in mind for that? I do. Okay. At City, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Okay, me too. Three, two, one, two, two one city. city. You say three, one. Yeah. Okay, one, two, one. I was actually going to go for a draw, um, but then I think City my, my big thing is City have had a run out now playing the 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 Community Shield, which is a bit more competitive than anything. And yeah. I have no idea what the Charles Stars could look like. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, Stevie, thank you. 
Yeah, well, thank you for that episode. Thank you the, for the Olympics for treating us. Now you have our top threes of everything. Um, it's been a phenomenal episode. So much sport, but as you said, we get you the grind. And but actually, we got a second dopamine hit of of Paralympics coming up. So that's exciting. That will be in the next episode. If you've listened this far, please smash a like on the podcast or share it with someone or the video if you're watching um, that version. We really appreciate the support and love doing this and would love to do it more and more and get um, as much momentum with this going. But thank you for listening. Um, we really appreciate it. And Stevie, enjoy your um, weekend and can't wait to watch the, the box, box again as well as the pro tiers. What a treat. Yeah, no, it's going to be another big, another big stack for it. As 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 I said, get get if you if you if you if you're in relation, get the dates in on the next thing because come the weekend, it's football Friday night, football and rugby Saturday. There's Test cricket starting on Thursday. You you're not going to get me away from TV this weekend. No, it's unreal. It's unreal. Stevie, thank you very much. Thank you everyone for listening. We'll see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>